Welcome back to the channel everybody. Once again, thank you for watching my videos. On this episode, we install a dual fan on the radiator. We test the wiring. We get the fan running. We put it back on the car and see if this solves our overheating problem. Once installed, we take the car for a test drive and talk about our results. Stay tuned. As you can see, I took the radiator out um, due to the overheating issue I had. Um, just want to point out, if you don't have one of these, you should get one. It's a rib nut gun, and uh, I, should, I don't have the actual tool around at the moment, but these are what's called rivet nuts. You can get packs of them. And you get a little tool that screws in and you drill a hole and you pump the tool um, and basically it's a combined rivet and threaded insert so you see that that's just old caulk or something under there not the prettiest but as you can see it crushes and rivets in there and now you have the ability to put a nut in there. Not a nut, sorry. What am I thinking? I'm a nut. Put a bolt in there. As you can see, it threads it. These come in real, real handy. I've used these all over the place. Um, for the fuel pressure regulator, or a couple of other things. Um, yeah, just very handy to have. Okay, so I have the radiator out, and what I did was I put an extra fan on. Before I had one fan in the center, now I've got two. I've wired them together. I soldered some wiring together. We're going to, I'm gonna hook up 12 volts to that and see if the fans both kick on and if they're blowing in the right direction. So. Okay, what I've got here, this is a power probe tool. So when you connect it to 12 volts, it automatically turns on 12.1 volts. Um, it's really cool. So what I'm going to do is, this is going to be my ground. So let me hook this up to the All right, let's try this again. So I got the power probe hooked up. Um, Let's get the ground from the power probe. This is the ground. And what I've just found out is I have to reverse the polarity. So that's what I have to do for some reason. So I get 12 volts to that. Fans turn on. So that's how I'm going to do it on the car and see what happens. See if that solves the issue. That and also we um, bleeding the system properly of air. Okay, I got the radiator loosely fitted at the moment. It's not tied down yet, hoses are not clamped. Slight issue here with the wire. It's gonna it's gonna hit on this and probably get ripped, so uh, I'll have to tie it back to the fans. The support brackets the way they work as I just showed you um, they go like so and then that bolt screws down into there and that's what holds the right on so that's temporarily on Movement to it. So 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten down the clamps. Hose clamps, <coughs> fit that bad boy on, and then fill it up with the uh, fluid. Uh, let's pour some fluid in and crank it up. See what happens. Up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and make sure that the heat is set to on. Might turn the fan on as well. Get the heat running. Handbrakes on. I'll just double check we're ready to fire up. Oh. Bubbling a little more than I thought. It's gonna get everywhere. First time I'm using this tool. yet oh what is that nope, that's just a cardboard hole fooled me all right is to let it run as it gets hot the air releases from the system and bubbles up that's the highest point I think it's about level with the heater hose I need to raise the car up a little bit obviously the fans are not on yet Cold. I'm gonna see if I can raise the car up a little bit. I think th this needs to be the highest point, and that heater hose got cooling in it, and it's about level. So we just try that. All right, everybody. I think the fans just kicked on. Whew. And a nice cold breeze over here. We got suction. He's sucking. I don't see many air bubbles coming up. Yeah, she's about halfway. Alright, we got some movement. We got some burping happening. That's what I wanted to see. Oh, is the rim junk? Or is the axle maybe bent? Or am I just being paranoid? I don't know. You guys tell me. That noise definitely went away. And, uh, let's see if there's any play. I don't feel any play at all. Part of the problem with a project that runs, you know, several years is I don't always remember if I've de done something or not. And those fittings up there, uh, they seem to be low on grease. So as you can see, I greased them. I put new grease in there. 
packed them full. I think I had done that before. I don't know if the grease has come out already. I doubt it, but it's possible. So anyway, I put new grease in there. This, uh, this input, or sorry, output shaft is leaking oil. I did clean most of it up. And I think what is happening, if I put the light down here, is that this is a custom drive shaft that I had made, custom made. And so this yoke is a lot wider than the original one from Nissan. Um, so I think it's actually hitting the seal and knocking the seal loose. Um, the seal isn't exactly uh, closed. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is maybe get a new one and cut the shield off and uh, see if maybe it still leaks. I did clean it all up. It's pretty much all gone, but uh, there, I don't know if you saw it before or if I've showed footage of it before. You can still see some oil here. Um, there's black oil all over. Not black, but you know it's obviously it's transmission oil um, I keep forgetting to tighten that I think I might do that now actually um, but that's leaking a little bit so a couple of little leaks here and there minor little issues here and there but uh, other than that um, we're doing pretty good looks like we scraped here we scraped here I cut that off a little bit uh, looks like we scraped maybe here as well. So she's pretty low. Uh, that's what you get when you lower your car. Okay, well, I ran this thing for a good hour. It's, uh, the liquid's pretty hot, so I'm just going to let it sit. Um, it did bubble. It kept bubbling and bubbling and bubbling. I'm not sure how long. Honestly, I need to run it. <laughs> We'll take it for a drive tomorrow and see. Uh, fingers crossed if the overheating issue is gone. And hopefully all the air is out. Or most of the air is out. So I'll let this cool before I uh, take it off. Unfortunately, after the test drive, we still had some overheating problems, so I'm not sure what's going on. Well, another issue for another day. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and subscribe.